Hi guys, it's Claire's, and today we're going to do um, uh, something new. We're going to do a tutorial on creating florals using these Dr. P.H. Martin's Radiant Concentrated Watercolor. I purchased four of them. I have the Violet, the Cherry Red, um, Lemon, and Turquoise Blue. We might not be using them all, but um, I will let you know as I kind of go along. I am leaning more towards using a blend of the violet, uh, the turk blue, and the red. Um, but again, uh, let me just see where the flow takes us and we will go from there. Um, so yes, so uh, for brushes we are going to be using the number 8, the number 4, and the number 1. And for the florals today we're going to be doing... Um, we're going to be doing something super simple and light just to kind of give you an intro to these, how to use these colors. Um, so yes, let's begin. Uh, I'm just going to keep my brushes to the side. And so the first thing we're going to do is I'm just going to take a pencil and very lightly draw on... Um, a faint skeleton of what and where we're going to have these florals happening. So I'm just going to move this palette a little bit and let's make it happen something like this. Oops. Just a very light direction. I just want to give it some direction so I know exactly where things are going to be. And yeah. So I'm just literally drawing these lines to kind of give me an idea of where I want my florals to be. I'll probably have a couple of small ones here and some big ones here and here most likely. And yeah. And then maybe just a couple of tiny ones over here not a massively big deal yeah so very very rough drawing like i said um okay and so to begin with what we will do is so the mind you while we are using these radiant colors it will also um i'll also be using some of my uh regular colors to offset it because these are really bright um so yes so we will start off by mixing some on here because that is actually it makes the intensity of the colors a lot less on the paper when you kind of put it down. At least that's what I found. So I'm going to take some of my red and I'll add a drop of it. I'll actually add two drops of it. Let me just put this here so you can see. I'm going to add a drop of it right there. And then I'll add another drop here. Oops, that's more than a drop. And then I'll just, so I'll add three drops actually because I might want to add um might want to try mixing it with the blue as well so i'll leave the red the intense red because these are double drops here um as the plain color so if i need to use plain red i'll use that one um for the one each i'll mix one purple with it there we go they look really dark you can't really tell the difference i hope i remember this and then the other one i want to mix some of the blue, although I could mix some of the yellow and I might get some really nice orange happening, but let's try the blue and keep it with that purple indigo kind of feel happening. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay my water down first. So for this I will use, so I'm going to do my big blooms first. So I'm going to use my number eight uh, Princeton Neptune. And I'm just getting some water from my water tub, whatever you want to call it. I have it right here on the side. I'm not going to try getting it into the screen. Let's just keep the screen nice and clean. And I am going to start off by doing some really basic floral uh, petals. Uh, now, you might not be able to see this because it's just water on my brush. And I'm just laying down 
the color by drawing on these little petals here. And I want these petals to intersect and touch each other because when I add the water, it's going to flare up in every direction. So I'm going to have them touching. So I'm literally just drawing leaves or painting leaves with the water that I have here. And trying to make them as flowy as possible with a good intensity of uh, water happening so that when I add the color, it'll give me a nice flare. I want to make sure the color is, uh, sorry, the water is spread nicely on the sheet here and it's not just uh, drying up in certain areas. And this is a fairly big bloom, so that's okay because um, I want to keep, again, like I said, I want to keep this tutorial to be simple and fun for you guys so that you can kind of leave or walk away from this um, with a lot of experimentation that you can kind of do. So now I've laid down some color, uh, sorry, some water. I keep saying color, force of habit. And now the next thing I am going to do is I am going to take my... Um, Oh, I'll take the number eight again and I am going to get some of my red and I'm just going to add it right there and you see that lovely flare it gives you this is the beauty of the radiant watercolor um, the radiant concentrated colors now as soon as I have this I'm just going to take my number four and I'm going to get some of the purple mixed with the red and I'm just going to add that at the center. In fact, you know what? I'm going to continue to use this brush because the application is too little. The thicker the brush, the more color you hold and the better the reach. So, and the more you kind of dab at the center, it flares out even more and kind of gives you a good mixture. So, um, Feel free to add that and then once you reach that stage just kind of mix the color around and you have a good enough um, just yeah this is this is a fun satisfying part to kind of see how it takes over the water and blends in and gives you like these nice patterns and these nice mixes um, and if you want you can have it go all the way to the end or you can kind of leave it to where um, wherever it reaches like depending yeah you need to you need to be the judge of how how much you want this to go like I like how this is kind of ended and I might just take I know there's a little bit of color on this here so I might just add a little bit here to kind of give it that edge or and I like these soft edges here so I'm going to leave those um, yeah, so this is how you would essentially do it. I'm just going to finish this fl floral off by adding a couple of strokes here and there to kind of give it that nice loosey feel. Uh, I'll leave that end. There we go. And like it's quite intense, isn't it? But it's super pretty as well. Uh, I find that even after I wash my brush, I need to keep on dabbing it onto the paper towel to get all the color off. For the reds especially, um, the cherry red, it's quite intense, but I love it. Um, another way you can kind of do these lines is if you just have water on your brush without any color, because the color is quite intense, and you can just smoothen it out. And... I don't want to do too much because I like how this is, but I let, let's do it for the next floral. Actually here, this section here. See if you just kind of very lightly bring out, emphasize the edges. It gives you that nice, soft effect. Um, one more thing you can do while you're at this stage is using your number four, you can give the center like a darker look and by that I just add a little bit of black so I'm using my St. Petersburg White Knights black and I have that on the tip of the number four and I'm just gonna dab it in the center and while it is still damp it's going to give me this ring of black 
and it won't flare up as much as the um, uh, concentrated colors but it does a decent enough job and I like the good contrast that it gives me so we're good with this um, so now once we've done this we can kind of go ahead and create the next squirrel and for that I'm going to use my my squirrel mop brush and I just have water on it right now and here's what I'm going to do I'm going to create a bloom that kind of touches this petal here and perhaps this petal we'll see and you'll see what happens like this nice flare of color again and so for this bloom I'm just going to add the water like a rose facing upward so I'm touching the edge and you see that flow of color and then I'm going to do another flow here um, sorry another lay of color there and then in the center I'm just keeping it very light um, but making sure that the three strokes I'm adding do touch each other so you can have flow of color and then I'll have one petal kind of going outward and yep yeah, so once I have these done I'm going to go ahead and take the blue and the purple, sorry, the blue and the pink that I've mixed, and I'll use this brush, and I'm going to flare that in here, and here, and here, and just have it flare out. So for this, I'm going to again do my little swooshy thing by just rotating the sheet and it looks like maybe the blue and the pink didn't quite mix as well because I'm seeing more of the blue than the pink so I'm just going to make sure I mix it properly before I go ahead and dab a little bit more um, so I'm just going to dab that and I'll just add some at the top as well just to give it a little bit of help with where it's flowing and then I'm adding some more here and then I'll just add some at the tip so again you want this to be flowing nicely so just help it a bit if you can and it gives you a really nice rainbow monochromatic not rainbow because rainbows have all the colors but this is just like a nice monochromatic color and like I mentioned previously just get um, just get one of the brushes and with just water on it we're just going to add a couple of strokes of plain water and this will help the colors move a bit more so for instance here I'm just gonna add some water just make sure you don't have too much water rub it off if you feel like there's too much water and I'm just helping the color move in certain areas here okay um, because I do want that nice effect of hey here's some lighter colors of blue and here's the um, like it's not just one big dark blob but you have several colors and I'm just adding a couple of strokes at the top to indicate areas of the flower that might be petals of the flower the floral that might be on the background as opposed to the foreground and again these are nice and light and you can just have help them move a little bit add your little dots to kind of indicate that these are loose and yeah just kind of touch it up wherever you feel necessary and then once you're once you're finished doing all of that you can just let it go all right so I just need to be able to let it go right now because seriously can't overwork this but I have such an issue when it comes to like making colors move it's so mesmerizing all right so there's the other floral that we did and now we can actually do let's do one more three and then we'll do some tiny ones at the top because um, I'm really liking how all of this is kind of flowing so we have the blends happening here and then we can just do like 
some of the pinky ones um pinky ones by pinky ones i mean just the one with the cherry red that is what i am meaning so let me just wash my brush and then we'll keep that ready i'm going to use my squirrel mop brush to apply the rest of the color for sorry the water for this next floral and so for this floral i think let's just make it something really basic like maybe like a tulip or something um i'm just trying to think actually no instead of a tulip let's do like one of those um really spiny florals uh and it's what i kind of demoed in my first series or uh, my demo video for these florals and i'm just literally what i'm doing is i'm creating lines that kind of go towards the center forming almost like in a star like fashion and i'll have some of them touching maybe some of them not touching um and i just want to do it sporadically so just using water you're bringing all of these lines together you can have some of them intersecting with the blue ones here and that's okay and some with the pink but the pink's mainly dried up already so not a big deal if it is it's fine we're just experimenting this is just to kind of get you acquainted with um, the flow of how these work all right so I've done most I've done quite a bit of blobs here so let's uh water blobs or paint strokes so going back with this i'm going to take the red and i am going to apply it right there and you see that nice flare again that it gives you and i'm going to try and make as much of it go towards the top and towards the sides because we have like a pink floral right at the bottom and I don't want it to be too overpowering. So again, try and switch it, swash it as much as you can. I'm gonna add more to the center here so that it can flare out and do its thing that it normally does. Yep. I'm just giving it a little bit of help so it can move faster. the sides can really get some more nice intense color there we go and so now that i have this i think um i'll add some of the blue over here just so it doesn't look too pink in this area so i'm just adding a, a bit of blue see even even though i'm adding a bit of blue look how intense the color is like it's massively intense and it's literally just me touching the tip of my brush into the color that I have on my palette and that's not a lot of color at all so keep that in mind as you are laying down your color I'm just gonna take this brush and I am going to add actually no I'll use my number four because I want the strokes to be little not big and I'm gonna add water from the outside in and this will just help the color move so this is me adding strokes from the outside in helping the color move. Um, I'm gonna add some here too. Just add a couple of light ones on the outside here. Dipping to get some more water and adding a couple of strokes again on the outside because I want it to be dark and then I want there to be super light ones at the side too. So almost like a feathering effect. Um, and then let's do some on this side from the outside in. And again, see how it flows and grows. And it's a super, super pretty effect. So giving it a light, a couple of light strokes at the top. As well. And then uh, now that I have some of that purple on here, I'll just add a little bit here too. Just for some variation, kind of define the center a little bit. I like that. I think it looks super pretty. 
So there we go. So we have our three florals. Now we can kind of go into the greens. Um, for the greens, I'm just going to quickly add some of that over here. So for the greens, I am going to be using my green from, um, uh, whatchamacallit, the St. Petersburg. And it is the green. It's called green. Uh, and it's a nice dark forest green. So uh, for this, I will use, I'll start off with using my number four. And I'm going to mix that green with a little bit of the umber. And I'm going to try and get it to be as light as I can. Um, but let's see what happens. Because I also want it to be dark. So. so I'm just using the tip, pressing down, and dragging off. All right, so I'm just going to take a little bit of the blue that I have and add it at the tips here. So I took some of the blue from the palette and then adding some more here. And it gives you that nice two-tone effect, which is pretty. So those are some greens. We can add some more in other areas. I'll add some here. And then I'm just going to add like a trail like a trailing stem and just adding some sporadic amounts of green. And just kind of keep going. I'm going to trail this off after I've added a darker green to the stem. I'm just going to trail it off and let it be like a loose tendril kind of thing happening. And for this one, I'll just do one more off to the side here. And leave that and <clears throat> we'll do a couple at the top as well and then we'll kind of do the rest of the uh, tiny florals and then we have like this really nice first tutorial on on our um, on our concentrated watercolors by BH Martin so there we go I'm just doing some lighter ones um, sorry uh, lighter in the sense in size not color and I'll do a couple of that protruding over here as well so you can you can swatch you can swatch from out in or in out um, they both work and give you different results so that's from in out here's from out in and you can see that the shapes are slightly different. If you want more jagged shapes, you go from the in out, and then that's how you kind of trail off with the tip of your um, brush. All right, so let's do the final bits, and we are good to go. So we're just gonna create this loosey goosey kind of trailing <clears throat> stem at the top and I'm gonna have some of these protruding so we can create some florals and then I'm just going to get some water and create some leaves that are a little bit longer in shape using water on my brush I want I want to try and make them lighter so I'm just trying to get them lighter it's working maybe not let's see all right and so now we'll just end off with a couple of florals over there I feel like we've used like in an adequate amount of purples and blues and pinks I'm gonna add some of the yellow 
to the pink that I have or the red that I have in the center. I'm just going to mix the yellow because it looks like there's a ton of it at the bottom. So, yeah. All right, so I'm just going to get one drop of yellow and add it there and shut it off quickly. And let's lay the color. I'm going to use the number four for these because these will be tiny. So um, let's use the squirrel mop brush to apply the water and then we will go off into the rest of it. So I've just applied like three strokes and I'm getting some of this color and I'm going to add it right there. And there we go. Just help it swish around. And it is so pretty. I love it. I love these colors. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of these. I'm going to add some more here. Literally just a couple of strokes and you're good to go. Uh, because these are just like filler flowers, tiny ones. Oh, some got into the leaf, that's okay. If you don't want it to get onto the leaf, you can just, oops, that's a lot of color on there. Just take a brush that you have not been using and just swipe it away. But see how intense it is? Even as I'm swiping away, the color has stuck. So there's nothing that can be done about it at this stage. So I'm just going to add some trailing ones off here. And I don't want them to be too intense, so I'm just apply the color and leave it that way. And I'll just do one here as well. but I'm going to add it. I add some, added some of the purple in it just to kind of see what would happen. And I'm just adding a couple of sporadic ones here and there. Now these you could also just do a flick of color um, and to get your random splatter. You don't have to do any of this, but I'm just trying something new, so I'm going to leave it at that. I think that's good enough. I like the intensity that's happening here. Um, yeah. And I'm just going to do one thing, which is this. I'm just going to add a couple more strokes here, make this a fuller flower. I didn't want it to be this big, but I want the I want there to be a gradual flow to the flower as opposed to just looking um, like one hard blob of color. And I'm going to go back in and get some green and cover up these areas here. Quick fix. I didn't want it to be too dark. Yeah, so clearly these, if you're if you want them to kind of blend in, it's better if they're blending in like this with each other as opposed to with the green because it's not. I don't like it. it. Doesn't look to be as pretty. Um, yeah. So those are my tips on how you do these. Uh, I'm just going to add a couple of more tendrils, keeping up with the wildflower effect that we've been going for lately. And you can have it be a different color if you wish. But just trying to keep it light and airy. And cute. 
So I'm going to add a couple over here as well. Um, just a small one here. But yeah, you use your discretion and decide if you want to stop, if you want to add some more, if you want to continue having these all over. It is entirely up to you. <clears throat> I just showed you how to use these colors and you can kind of take this and do something that you want to, like a composition that suits you. So please do try it, make it your own. Um, yeah, and have fun with it because these are fun and they are definitely relaxing to work with. And as you can see, even as I'm talking, I'm trying to like, I can't get my hand off the sheet because now I feel like I can do it all over. <laughs> so yeah, so this is what we've ended up with. Um, I feel like if we got more of a coral color here, it would have been nicer at the top. But that's okay. I mean, it's all about mixing and learning how to mix these colors as well. Um, and this is good enough for me. So anyways, thanks so much guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know in the comments what you guys thought. Um, as I mentioned before, um, if you are interested in purchasing these, the, um, the link for them uh, is, I've listed it below in the description. <clears throat> so you can take a look. I've only listed the four colors. You can actually buy the whole pack, but to me it's a little bit redundant because some of the colors are very similar. Um, yeah, so let me know how it turns out for you guys. Uh, send me your images. I love to see your work uh, on Facebook and Instagram. And if you feel like these videos have been valuable to you, please do consider sharing it on your social media channels. I really appreciate the word of mouth. And thanks so much, guys, for your continuous support. And we'll chat soon. Bye.